What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training. Today, we're going to be breaking down one of Amari Cooper's press releases and these one on one clips that he has been releasing on Instagram. So, we're going to be talking about how he's able to get a ton of separation, how he's able to move this DB off the platform, and what will make this DB commit. So, I hope this video gives you guys some value and it teaches you a few new things about press releases, what you guys can do when you are tested with press, and how you guys can create some separation. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to be able to keep the speed that you've built in the offseason, right? During the season, I see it happen so often that wide receivers start to lose speed, they lose explosiveness, they lose strength, they're not as strong anymore anymore, check out that very first link in the description for our in-season 28-day wide receiver gym training schedule. So it's a four-week long step-by-step -step schedule designed for wide receivers to take their skills or maintain their skills and keep them at that next level during the season. So it's all based around having a one-week per game schedule. So I hope you guys could check that out. Very first link in the description below. If you're a wide receiver in-season and you still want to maintain the gains you've made in the offseason, let's get started. So this first release here, it's kind of like this hesitation skip into this like double up and he's running this goal line fade, right? So let's talk about a couple different things. So the number one thing that's going to move a DB off this platform is that we actually have to threaten him in a direction. We have to threaten him vertical. What so many receivers struggle to do is that they do too much dancing behind the line of scrimmage, right? They'll go this way, but they're not actually going this way. They're not actually going on a 45 degree angle to really threaten this DB. So Cooper does a great job of taking this little fall step, prep step, whatever, whatever you want to call this back leg right here. I call it a kick step and that kick step and he picks up that front foot subtly to shoot him to the outside, right? That actually gives him that explosion that allows him to actually move on the 45, right? Right? Because if I'm not getting out to this spot and I'm just trying to make this move when this DB's in catch technique, which is essentially a yard or two off the line of scrimmage, I'm not going to get any space because I'm not threatening him there. So Cooper does a great job of actually moving off the line and threatening him. Now, when he plants this front foot right here, this or this left foot, I should say, it's a, it's a part of the release, but it's really to push and to throw in this direction because no DB is able to, to guess correctly 100% of the time, right? They like to think that they can. Everybody loves to say, oh, well, the DB's just got to stay patient. But if we can actually commit myself, if I could actually come off this thing and commit my upper half to the outside, really throw, really step outside of his frame, bring my upper half with this thing. That's what will make this DB jump, right? So if you come off the line and you're doing these just quick chattery steps and you're stepping inside the DB's frame, you're not stepping outside of his frame, that's not going to get him to move. Now, when Cooper does this type of a move, everybody loves to say that, oh, he's reaching, right? So when he comes off the line and he throws this one too, he's going to be reaching with this cut. He's reaching too far. But if you guys can bring your hip and you bring your torso with the cut like Cooper does, you see how he starts nice and square and he brings brings it with the cut because he's pushing off of this inside leg right here. That's what allows you to almost keep this cut inside of your frame. You want to step outside of his frame, but inside of your frame. And this is also why it's super important that receivers need to have flexible hips and they need to be explosive from their hips because you cannot do this if you don't have good flexibility. So many receivers are so stiff when it comes to their hips, their groin, and they physically cannot step this far without almost hurting themselves or it feels like they're putting a ton of tension on their groin and their hips. So that's why it's super important that you guys should be stretching. You guys should be doing specific things to help your game outside of the gym, outside of field work, but in recovery and stretching to help you guys with these certain breaks. Now, another great thing that he does here is when he strikes the ground, you see how his toes forward, right? So when he shoots this thing down, he doesn't open up his toes. So many receivers will open up their toe in this direction, right? And what that does, that opens up their hip, but ultimately you guys have to get here. You guys have to get to the outside. You have to get to the fade. So when you open up like this, you're going to have this long, slow process of getting back out around. Cooper does a great job of keeping that weight on the inside arch of his foot. He strikes the ground on the arch of his foot, but when he drives, he's pushing off the inside arch. That's the magic spot that we want to be at. You want to keep your shin angle at almost a 45 degree angle because yes, we got separation, but I want to keep separation. And this push off of here, this explosion is what allows him to accelerate out to the outside and ultimately win that race to the back corner. You see how it's not a ton of separation, but it's enough separation to where he could have late hands. DB doesn't have time to react. And this is perfect. This is wide ass open, especially when you're down there on the goal line. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job there by Cooper getting outside the DB frame, really throwing, bringing his body with the cut and striking the ground correctly. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I always appreciate the feedback. Always great hearing from you guys. And again, fellas, if you're a wide receiver during the season, you want to keep the speed, explosion, power, strength that you've built in the offseason. You don't want to taper off. And we're coming up on the middle of the season. So I hope you guys could check out that very first link below for our in-season wide receiver gym training schedule. We'll really help you guys out and help you keep that peak performance during the season. I'll see you guys next time.